This week, Arca Swiss clamps and QD connectors, the easiest, most secure method to connect your camera to your support equipment or your strap, plus some of your questions. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. I just want to remind everybody, you know, if there's a specific part of this video that you want to jump to, just look in the video's description and you can hit show more or click on the video title depending on your platform and there'll be a linked table of contents with linkable time codes as well as kind of a, a linked chapter scroll bar. If you're on your computer watching this on YouTube, you can just sort of scroll along and pick which part you want to watch or rewatch. I want to big, give a huge shout out to everybody who's been liking, subscribing, and sharing the videos. It makes a huge difference. Thanks so much. And I also want to put the word out, we're going to talk about a lot of gear today. Uh, on Tuesday, September 1st, we're doing an office hours, Rick and I. We're going to probably have Woody and Darren there as well. And we're going to talk about gear, just sort of all about gear and take a lot of your questions that you've submitted. So that's a free interactive meeting on Zoom. It'll also be on YouTube live. So make sure you, do, you go over to my, my website to hudsonhenry.com slash office hours to sign up for that. And please leave a question too, because this entire series of videos is really driven by you as an audience comments and, and questions about what you want to know more about. So one thing I've heard quite a bit about lately, you know, I, I talk a lot about tripods and heads, and I think I just sort of assume everyone's using Arca Swiss. And I've mentioned QD connectors and LumaLab straps, which are often in short supply, although I believe they're available again right now. But I'll also show you a way to get a QD connector going with your older straps. I've had a lot of people ask about, you know, say I have a Black Rapid strap, how do I use a QD? I have a solution for that from Kirk. So first thing I want to talk about is clamps. I remember when I was really starting out with photography, I used to thread the little plastic sort of connector for the cheaper tripod I had into the bottom of the camera or thread the ball head into the bottom of the camera every time I went to use it. And then I was looking for different systems. I remember buying one from NovaFlex that looked really cool but wound up being really frustrating because it wasn't secure and the camera was constantly moving. Uh, until I eventually realized that all the pros that I met and all the pros that I started working with and apprenticing with and everyone was using an Arca Swiss dovetail system with an Arca Swiss style clamp. And what that means is essentially there's just a clamp. You turn a dial or you pull a lever over to the side, really right stuff in, in Acrotec, make beautiful levered clamps. I like Kirk's big knobbed clamp. Um, and I really like Acrotec's lever that has a lock on it. But essentially, it's just a, a, a quick turn and it's got these little moving jaws and there's a dovetail on the base of your camera and it just locks in place. And it is bomb-proof secure. It's going nowhere. You can throw it up on your shoulder and carry it. I like to put an L bracket. I don't know, ever for the last 10 years, every time I buy a camera body, the first thing I do is go and look to see if Kirk has a dedicated L bracket ready for it. And I pre-order it. Usually the minute that they announce a camera, the L brackets are available for pre-order and I get the L bracket and the camera at about the same time. Maybe the L bracket first. Uh, and you know, an L bracket just threads into that spot on the bottom of your camera. The, I like the fact that Kirk and Really Right Stuff put an integrated Allen key into the base. I really love how Kirk has its little keeper system. It's super handy. Um, and essentially you can easily flip from vertical to horizontal. If you're a ball head user, you know, I'm not a huge fan of ball heads except for some applications like using them on sliders or star trackers, but uh, I like a pan and tilt system and a fluid head system even better just because it's to me, it's so much easier to work with and do micro adjustments and get your composition dialed. But either way, it's really simple to get vertical or get horizontal with an L bracket and it just locks rock solid into place and it becomes the basis for an entire system. Here you see I'm using a nodal rail on the top of my tripod. Well that nodal rail or no parallax rail for panoramas is a dovetail system that fits in the Arca Swiss clamp atop my pan and tilt head which has a rotating Arca Swiss clamp and I can spin that either direction. Then it has another clamp with it's another dovetail that slides along. These are all Arca Swiss clamps and dovetails. I'm actually dealing with three here. The clamp on the top of my Acrotec panorama head, 
the clamp that lets me adjust where the clamp sits on my adjustable nodal rail and then the clamp that the camera clamps to. I mean, boom, boom, boom. And all of them are so secure that I have no problem picking this up, carrying it over my shoulder to another location. And it's just quick and easy. So for anybody looking for, you know, what quick release system to use, look no further. When you have a long lens, you know, here I'm, I'm using my favorite head on my tall set of legs, uh, my, my, my fluid head, my Manfrotto fluid head. When you get a long lens that has its own foot, you know, I like to use Kirk's ultra lightweight feet that have a QD built in. We're going to talk about QDs. I have a QD in my L bracket and a QD port on the base of my long lens foot feet. And that, that foot is just essentially a single dovetail Arca Swiss rail that plugs in where the stock lens foot would go. You can also get just an Arca Swiss rail to, to screw into the lens foot that comes with your camera. And you just set your clamp up in line with the head and loosen the, you know, for a gimbal or a fluid head like this, you, you slide the camera forward and aft till it's neutrally balanced. And then boom, you can just slide around, move it. It's so easy to take on and off. I mean, uh, these Arca Swiss systems are the industry standard for good reason. Arca Swiss is the original innovator. I think everyone else licensed it from them. If you look into Wimberly, Kirk, you know, really right stuff. There's a ton of aftermarket companies coming after them that all use the Arca Swiss standard. It's just super, super simple to use and a joy to work with. So now let's talk about QDs for a second. QD is a little bit later innovation and it's awesome. It's just a simple little push button, locking, rotating connection port. It's actually something that came up from the military, special forces. Uh, for a way to plug in their straps for their equipment and get them on and off really, really quickly and easily. Well, so Kirk Enterprise Solution has been putting these in all of their L brackets. I know Really Right Stuff puts them in theirs too, but I, I prefer Kirk and I really love Luma Lab strap. Now they're tough to get a hold of. And I know a lot of you already have straps from other companies, so I'm gonna give you a solution for retrofitting your prior strap. But essentially you just push this little button, locks that in and you're connected. It's that simple. There's a real positive click. When, when you wanna get your camera back off and put it on the tripod, boom, you're back on. I really, really love having them on my long lens feet too. I didn't get that guy balanced apparently. Here, I'm not looking. Too much multitasking. If I get it balanced, that won't happen. But you see with the fluid, it's not a catastrophic flop if it does flop. So the great thing with having a QD on the foot of your long lens, this is my 500 uh, PF Nikkor lens, is I can plug right into that port on the foot, loosen the collar, and just hang my long lens off my back and it's whew, ready to shoot with whenever I want it. I'll loosen my strap a little. Whew, ready to shoot with whenever I want it. Vertical, horizontal, and it actually, if you're, if you're wanting to brace a little bit, you can set your strap up. One thing I like about the Luma is it's easy adjustability and kind of brace a little bit with that strap connected into the QD port. So it's just really, really handy. You know, it's a, it's a great, great way to go. The QD just makes it simple to get on and off your strap with nothing dangling loose for the wind to catch while you're working on the tripod. I, one thing I cannot stand, it's having some kind of strap dangling. The first thing I do when I get a new camera body is even take those little triangular metal things out of the strap mounts on my camera. I don't want anything loose jangling around on my camera. All right, so I promised I would talk a little bit about an aftermarket product that'll let you, those of you with other sliding straps jump in on the QD revolution. Well, Kirk sells this little guy right here. It's just a DQD connector. I'll put a link to all of this stuff in my, uh, I'll put a link to L brackets for the Nikon cameras because I know a lot of you are Nikon aficionados, but you can go from there and look for the ones for your cameras. Um, and the, the feet for the Nikon long lenses, these work for both the 70 to 200 FLED and the newer 70 to 200 S and the 500 PF, as well as these little QD retrofit and the Luma's Quick Loop 3 QD strap. This thing's awesome. I think it's the 3.5 strap now. I'll put a link to that if you can get one. 
and you, and you want it. It's just my favorite strap ever. It's so simple, so light, works so well. But if you have another strap that you love, you can go QD by just putting that little D right through the carabiner or set it up you know, on the strap, however you, however you have. Uh, but if you're a really right stuff user, you know how they have their little carabiner, essentially a locking carabiner set along their straps. Well, it's as simple as putting that little QD strap in there and boom, now all of a sudden you can plug into the camera. This is my backpack strap from, really, uh, from Black Rapid. And I keep this little QDD on there just so that I can plug in the same way as I would with my Luma strap when it's on my backpack. All right, so had a couple questions related to doing the time lapse in Milky Way that I did last week up on Mount St. Helens. And leave it to say, there's a lot of people excited about more training materials. I'm gonna be doing more both on time lapse and Holy Grail time lapse, as well as star tracking and getting beautiful Milky Way shots and compositing them. I'm probably gonna do a short course on the composited Milky Way star tracker and star stacking as well as a little bit longer course on time-lapse coming up. And I'm actually kind of partnering up in, in, with uh, Gunther from LR Time-lapse. So I'm gonna be doing some really, really fun stuff. One question I had that I've had before doing this one and I had in the wake of doing this is how to deal with condensation, particularly if you're setting up to do a day-to-night Milky Way transition. And in the past, I've talked about rubber banding some uh, hand warmers around your lens. Well, I had condensation on Mount Hood and you could actually see Jupiter and Saturn kind of going kind of fuzzy as the Milky Way and stars were twirling through the sky in that time lapse. And so it led me to kind of look around a little bit. And this is this really cool product. It's not that expensive. I'll put a link to it uh, that you can just put around your lens hood or around the tip of your lens and plug in to USB battery port and it's basically a little electric blanket for your lens's front element to keep that condensation off of it. And I've been testing it. It seems to work really well. I haven't done it at night yet out in the, uh, out in the true situation, but it's warm enough. I feel pretty confident that it's gonna work. So I'll report on that, but I'm gonna put a link to it. It comes in a box with nothing but Chinese characters on it, uh, but Plugging it into a USB power brick, testing it out, it has a very, very low draw and it gets warm but not hot. I wouldn't worry about it damaging your element whatsoever, but I do think it'll keep the dew and condensation off of it. And I'd recommend, if you're going to put it in your camera bag, using one of these little red whips uh, to keep it from getting the cord torqued around and pulled loose. Seems well made, nice sturdy Velcros on. So that's a cool little tip tool. Again, we're gonna be talking about a lot more gear on Tuesday in office hours. So Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, sign up for that at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Rick and I are gonna talk about the gear that we use and why, as well as a little bit about the state of the photo industry right now. And we'll also take a ton of your questions and just have a fun hours chat about all things photographic. That's Tuesday, September 1st, 10 a.m. Pacific, Hope you can see you there. Uh, preferably jump in on the Zoom meeting, that way you can be interactive, uh, but it's also gonna be on YouTube Live. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Again, thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and you know, keep sending those questions, whether you're typing comments in on YouTube or sending me emails or putting questions in as you sign up for office hours. That's what drives all this content. So thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next week.